Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer requested question, we've got from Stephen Turner, question, how realistic is the RWR in DCS? And the question is here, now let's settle down and get a cup of tea and digest this. I get the impression the RWR system in DCS is slightly unrealistic. While I expect the RWR to detect surveillance radars, or search radars in all aspects, agreed assuming it's omnidirectional, this should not be the case for fire control radars, often termed track radars as their beam is very, very narrow, known as a pencil beam, or I call it a pencil beam with small side lobes, designed that way to put the most energy into the main beam. All agreed so far. And therefore, the RWR on the aircraft that is not being tracked should not see the fire control radar, assuming that it's not within that pencil beam. Okay, everyone, I think we all agree so far. I have set up a couple of tests with my aircraft, normally the Hornet, flying parallel and 10 miles from the targeted aircraft directly at a SA-10 site. My RWR sees both the search radar and the track radar, even though the SA-10 is targeting the other aircraft. Given the very narrow beam width of the track radar, my RWR should not see this radar. According to the DCS Encyclopedia, the SA-10 system uses 30N6 track radar, which should be able to track multiple targets, similar to the fighter's TWS mode, but should only be able to target one target at a time. The missiles available to the SA-10 system in the DCS are the 5 Victor 5.5 and the 4.8 November for Echo. The former are semi-active radar homing and the latter is a TVM track via missile. Neither are active homing so none of those have got their onboard radar per se. 5v55 should require a constant link to the track radar to in intercept its target. The latter is capable of utilizing radio command guidance RCG and semi-active radar homing. In RCG mode, the guidance would not be seen by the target aircraft and therefore not activate the aircraft's RWR. So interesting observations. Uh, let's break it down. First of all, we can break this down into airborne radars that we're looking at in our passive RWR and then ground-borne radars that we're looking at in our passive RWR. So the first thing to say is that regards airborne radars, that we are sensing. We've done thorough tests and we've got a good video. In fact, I'll even link it in this video description. You can see everything is definitely working there. Uh, the pencil beam will come out of the uh, the airborne radar. And if you are within that pencil beam, which in DCS is two degrees left, two degrees right, two degrees up, two degrees down, so four by four degrees, then you will get uh, within the range simulated by the curvature of, of the earth and the power uh, uh, square root drop off uh, in terms of range as long as your secondary aircraft is within that pencil beam you will get the rwr warning of the track radar if you're outside there's stt obviously single target track if you're outside of that pencil beam then you will not get the rwr everything works perfectly there and so we'd expect the uh, ground form radars to work as well. And we haven't tested this. This is what we're going to test today. And basically what this guy here is saying is he doesn't think the ground radar, the interaction between the ground radar and the RWR in probably any aircraft are working properly. That's what he's saying. The next thing is he's made it really complicated for himself. He's chosen an SA-10, which is just too ambitious. If you try and get the data on the SA-10 S300 PS, it, we found it really hard to get proper radar data to see the exact way that it's guiding its missiles. And bearing in mind, it does actually have two track radars that you can use. Big bird in a clamp flap, what is it, flathead, flat plate? Can't remember now, whatever, it doesn't matter. And it's got different types of missiles. It's just a very complicated system to try and analyze and work out even if, and there's variables. Has DCS even modeled it right to the SA-10? Uh, there's variables. So what we're gonna do is cut those variables out. For our test, we're gonna simplify these things ever so slightly. We're gonna remove the SA-10, which is a non-known factor. We're gonna put a known factor in. We're gonna put a SA-2 with a SNR-75 fan song for our control radar. Now, the reason we're doing this is to keep it super simple. The fan song can only track one target. That's, you know, it's a 1950s radar and it can only track one target. Therefore, it, there's no extra complication in there. It can fire multiple missiles at that one target, but it cannot track multiple targets. If you're gonna say, well, why an SA-3 or an SA-6? If you read the qualifications of those SA-3 and SA-6, they can actually track multiple targets. They can only fire on one target, I think, but they can track multiple targets. The SA-2 can, fan song, can only track one target and we think the fire control beam is going to be a pencil beam as well uh, but that stands to be seen so let's go and see our setup in dcs we've got an sa2 with the p19 search radar there the sa2 is this guy here it's the snr 75 fan song and it is a track radar as far as we're aware it's going to send a pencil beam track out which is going to 
lock this guy. We're going to ensure that it locks this guy, which is the control vehicle. And then I've got a sequence 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 90, 180. And those numbers refer to the amount of degrees off bore, bore being the control vehicle. So for instance, if we get in that guy and get the lock, and then we jump in that guy there, 60 degrees, and also pick up the, the lock on our RWR, then we're going to see that the radiation cone is not four degrees it's actually going to be 60 plus degrees per size or 120 degrees and therefore we will confirm probably it is not modeling uh, ground-borne radar tracks correctly as the author of the comment said so let's go and test that out now so as i'm paused when you're in get in the control aircraft to get yourself locked up I'm gonna look at the fan song if i can find it let's see you should see this thing the whole chassis of this would turn to find rc to get the beam on him. Just search right now. Roger, it's a good idea to go quite slow so we can buy ourselves as much time as possible. Yep. Okay, Slows the fan song is now turning locked. against you. Okay, you're locked. Right, now I'm going to jump on my aircraft. I'm going to start with 10 degrees. Okay, yep, 10 degrees spiked. 20 degree. 20 degrees spiked. 30 degree. 30 degrees spiked. 40 degree. 40 degrees spiked. 50 degree. 50 degrees not spiked and hold and we've been actually done this several times with several different systems the sa2 the sa3 the sa6 and the sa and they all give exactly the same data that is that with track the radiation cone that they are sending out or at least the theoretical track radar cone that our rwrs are picking up are up to a maximum of 49 degrees each side totaling the maximum of 98 degrees for the zone of the track i'm I don't know, 90% sure that's probably incorrect. Pretty sure this fan song and the other should be a pencil beam, four degrees across, something, something like that, rather than 100 degrees, which is more like a uh, search radar, or, or if anything. However, I don't fully know that. So to summarize that, I think the author is correct. I think the air, it's hard to know whether it's the radar that's not working correctly or the RWR, uh, but that's just imagine that the RWR is correct. Let's say that the radar, the ground-borne track radar, is probably not modeled correctly and that it should be modeling a beam, a small pencil beam, we think, for the track target. In fact, all of them that we've tested are actually modeling up to a 100 degree segment with their track. Uh, I stand to be corrected. I'd love to hear from ED. I know I won't, but um, uh, let me know your thoughts. We really, you guys are more expert than me about this. Let me know if you think our DCS have got it right and there are massive track uh, zones or if you think I've got it right. Anything you want to add to the RC? Yes, I should say this is pretty definitive because this radar will only track what is pointed at, uh -huh. nothing else. Uh -huh. So we, we know that there's definitely an issue. Yeah. Uh, okay. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later.